there are um, there was a, you know literally like three billion dollars that was dumped into Camp Lejeune you know two years ago for hurricane and disaster relief work. Okay. Well, that whole region is completely tapped out, and there are a lot of companies who. You know, I, I mean, I talked to electrical companies that have told me that if they could hire a hundred people, they would hire them today to be really? able to do the work. And so, uh, yeah. in order to in order to meet some of that 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 lacking, because to be honest, some subcontractors are just telling us we're sorry. You know, we've we're backlogged for over a year, year and a half. And uh, you know, as you know, if you've worked with the government, um, everybody has a time that you have to get it done or else that big LD comes in and it mm -hmm. starts getting really expensive when you haven't delivered. So, right. um, so yes, we do. We do self-perform and it's not consistent. So it's not like you're going to see us self-performing the same trade throughout that region. There are times we'll self-perform uh, and then there are other times we're in the same boat. We don't have the capacity and we find a small business or another business that does have the capacity and they will get that. But uh, uh, I, I would I would preface it with this. Don't be afraid just because we self perform some work. Don't be afraid that there isn't a ton out there for you to still oh, do. There actually, is, is, yeah. Well, yeah. So I actually see that as a little bit of an opposite way. Right. Because it sounds like the, the, the self, self performing is not really part of y'all's model. Like it's something that it sounds like it's something you have to do and you will do if you have to. Yeah. But you would much prefer to have a strong network of small businesses and subcontractors that that take on this work. That's the model, right? That sounds yeah. And in certain regions, we 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 do not self-perform anything. So yeah, yes. on the West Coast, everything is um, subcontracted out. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. Yeah. And so so yeah, it just sounds like right. Like it's more of a backup. If you got to do it, you're going to do it because hey, job's got to get done. Job's yeah. got to get done at the end of the day, and it's going to get done because RQ Construction. Yep. That's how you keep your reputation because you guys are great. It's going to get yeah. done. This is one yeah. of the other things too. You know, you know because. Um, and, you know, one of the reasons why I really wanted to have you on here too, Jeff, you know, because mm -hmm. not only do you have a great reputation, but RQ is a great reputation, right? So what I really, Thank really you. wanted to uh, do was, what, you know, set a good precedent, right? Where, like, it's not the same situation with every other prime federal contractor out there. We all know that, like, some, you know, some, sometimes you know, different companies do business in different ways, right? They're mm -hmm. all, all different little caveats in there. But mm -hmm. when someone does business, especially a small business, does business with RQ, um, they are going to get exactly what's in that contract. There is no anything behind the scenes. It's straight mm -hmm. up. You guys go in here and perform and do a great job. Hey, not only is it great on this contract, but we got more for you. It's that kind of stuff, right? And it's proven yep. over and over and over again. Yeah, we have a lot of repeat uh, subcontractors that work for us for a number of years. Yeah. Now, okay. Mm -hmm. See, now you're really, really hitting into like you know some of the stuff I just find so interesting because. Yeah. Really, like, really, what I want the small businesses to like know. Let's you know, say, say you're a small business um, construction company. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. I know several here in Norfolk, uh, Tidewater area, mm -hmm. where they might not be as familiar with federal contracting. They might have a SAM record. They, you know, they might have dipped their toe a little bit, but they're used to commercial. They're used to residential. You know, they're they're, they're used to non-government work. Mm -hmm. If 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 you were going to talk to someone or you know talk talk to a small business who might have a great reputation, they're just thinking about coming into the federal space. What's maybe uh, some advice coming from someone who's reputable, who's done this, you know, uh, sure. the company behind you? What are some of the things that 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 maybe they should know first in order for them to, to get the fastest maybe foothold to start doing business with a company like RQ? Sure. You know, I think you kind of have to look at it. as This is a long game. Mm -hmm. Anytime you're going to get in a in in working in a federal market, it's a long game. And so look at the different components or the parts of that that you need to get your foot into. And I would say in speaking about RQ, uh, specifically your best um, point of contact are your estimators. And the way that we send out our bid invites. So once you're in our system and you get a bid invite from us, the person you get that bid invite from, that's your estimator. So you will speak directly with the person who's handling your scope of work. It's one of the benefits, matter of fact, that I always tote about RQ is that uh, uh, you, you're going to have a designated um, estimator throughout the process that you will be working with. And I just tell people, listen, 
they're they're awesome people they love teaching you they love learning from you i mean we don't want to assume like we we know we don't know everything matter of fact we need subcontractors because we know very little about you know what they are they are um, experts in um, yeah and so um in terms of how to navigate the whole federal side of things uh your estimator is um really important for you to establish a relationship with. So I say, call them, email them, bug the heck out of them. They don't care. <laughs> As a matter of fact, they love engagement. Okay. And, and, and when we look at our, we have a, you know, we have a tool that we use. We have tools that we use for, for um, tracking stuff. Mm -hmm. It logs all that stuff. So the, the more you're engaged, it actually ranks you. And it you're says, kidding. hey, this person is, is staying engaged. This person has already done this. They've done that. Well, if you're an estimator and you're looking for a sub, what are you going to do? You're going to go after the people who show the most interest and who are most promising to get, you know, to, to provide you with a, sub, uh, a bid. Mm 